Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,786. Today I'm in Switzerland detailing cars. This should be fun. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Guess what? Today I'm in beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. Oh my goodness, with a very special guest by the name of Alex Aleye. Now, I butchered his last name there, but Alex is going to be very kind to me because he's originally from Romania. Alex, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Yes, I am, Mark. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, say for my listeners your last name in your native tongue so you say it the right way. Elia. Elia. There we go. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's unique because uh, the way we spell it is uh, I-L-I-E, which looks nothing like what you just said, but I appreciate you helping me out there a little bit. My Romanian is uh, quite weak. Yeah. So. <laughs> In Romania, we pronounce, so how it's written, it's, it's the same. We pronounce it the same, so it's nothing. Uh, it's a little bit different. I don't know. It's yeah. Because... It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you say it, you say it a lot better than I I can, so I'll work on my Romanian. Now, before I give you a proper introduction and we dive into your life, what's one thing that most people don't know about you, Alex? Well, there's probably a lot of things <laughs> that people don't know about me because I use my social media only to promote my business, and that's Smart it. So guy. nothing else. I'm a father of two. Oh, I don't know. I have two passports. So I have both Romanian and German passport. Uh-huh. And I don't know. In When I was young, I used to play professional soccer. Wow. It was pretty good. I managed to get past to pre-selection for the national team at my age. Wow, nice. So then I missed a third one and... That was pretty much it because they, I, I'm, I think I didn't get to demonstrate my talent. And so they, they ask you, they send an uh, telegram and uh-huh. they ask you to come again. There was another regional pre-selection. And unfortunately, I was not in the nearby and the message got to me late. Oh, and, no. and, but I keep playing after, but not at the level that I wanted. So, But it's all my fault. I mean, I know uh, if I had the mindset and uh, uh, that I have now, I probably been in a different place but no regrets i'm here i'm healthy and it's all good well that is good now you're 34 years old so back when you were playing at a professional level how old were you then so i was from 12 i played that was when that happened that was i was 15 16 at the time yeah well a lot of competition in soccer uh, in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, the king, Europe, yeah. king sport. So very cool. Well, it's nice you got that experience. Well, let me give you a proper introduction and we're going to dive into your life. Alex Elia, he says it better than I do, is an automotive detailer from Zurich, Switzerland. Originally from, and I'm going to butcher this one too, Timisoara <laughs> in Romania, right? That was good. That. Okay, I did that well. He that has was- lived in Germany where he honed his detailing skills at a Mercedes-Benz dealership. After considering to move back to Romania, Alex, with his then-girlfriend, who's now his wife, decided to start a new life and a new business in Switzerland caring for fine automobiles. Through training, he earned a multitude of detailing certificates with IA Detailing and quickly expanded his business and his client list. He's been operating on his own detailing company since 2017, and he has not looked back since. We'll be back in just a moment to talk more with Alex, but first a word from our valued sponsor, so give him a listen. Keep your car shiny. We'll be right back. The best way to protect and preserve your vehicles, along with the meanings and memories and experience that they give you, is with a quality-made, custom-fit car cover from my friends at Covercraft. I purchased my first Covercraft cover for my 1967 Gia way back when I was in high school in 1975. At Covercraft.com, you'll find a multitude of indoor options, including form fit, fleece satin, and their very unique view shield. That's right. You can see your car right through the cover. But it's the sun that you really need to worry about. Quality outdoor options include Weather Shield HD and HP, Sunbrella, Reflect, Carhartt, Evolution, and NOAA. 
Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft too. Your cover is custom tailored for your special vehicles and manufactured with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. And I've got a great deal for you. If you use the code ya 21 at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off compliments of cars. Yeah, that's right. 10% off. Simply use the code ya 21 Y-E-A-H-2-1 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. The one I call my orange crush. They've been protecting vehicles since 1976. With all the time, effort, and money you've put into your classic vehicles, do you know how much you would receive if yours was stolen, damaged, or totaled in an accident or a fire? Your regular auto insurance carriers won't tell you until after the claim, and more than likely, you'll be in for a rude awakening. With an agreed value policy from American Collectors Insurance, you'll be paid your vehicle's full agreed value. No surprises. So don't just hope for a fair claim settlement. Be certain and know exactly what you'll get with an agreed value policy. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-A-C-I-Yeah. That's 866 866- 224-9324 and protect the ones you love. Tell them Mark Green at Cars Yeah sent you. That's American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors, folks just like you and me. All right, Alex, we're back in beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. And we're going to continue with a success quote or a mantra, some kind of a saying that has meaning for you. Maybe it's a guiding mantra for you. It's a nice way to get the, I usually say the tire spinning, but in your case, the random orbital or the direct drive polisher spinning. Yeah. Your yeah. So Alex, uh, grab the wheel. Yes. Well, there, there's something that I heard on a recording of Earl Nightingale's that's been stuck to, with me ever since. And it has to do with the law of... Uh, contribution and reward mm. and rewards and uh, it's something that i actually albert, uh, albert einstein answered when he was asked why are we here mm-hmm. what's our purpose and he said something that's like i said it's been stuck with me that we are here to serve others only and to the extent that how good we serve them that will determine how success, successful ah, successful we are in life brilliant. so that's something that i really and I'm into that, so I, I'm all for... You know, that is really the secret to happiness. And I can tell that unequivocally after interviewing now 1,786 people. My regular listeners have heard this, like you, Alex. I know you're a regular Cars yeah listener, and I appreciate that. That when we give back to others is when we are truly our happiest. Whether we know it or not, some people figure it out young in life. Some people it takes a lot longer to figure it out. But when you truly care enough to serve others, that is what is so fulfilling. And it's really sad that so many people don't figure that out younger in life. Some of us are taught that by our parents or by mentors. Who taught you that valuable lesson? Like I said, I heard that on the um, one of uh, Earl Nightingale uh, recordings that I Mm -hmm. that I discovered why because when every when I detail, the only thing I do is either listen listen to podcasts or audio books mm-hmm. or yeah that's pretty much it Pod, podcasts or audio books yeah. and yeah. I discovered uh, Nightingale actually I first discovered Napoleon Hill yes and then I discovered the so it all branched out from there then I a, 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 all names that I've uh, heard met, got mentioned by your uh, I guess. Previous guest, yes, a lot. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, well, they've shared a lot of uh, very valuable information, and that's a great thing. I wish when I was younger and I was detailing cars in junior high and high school and college that we'd had these audio books and podcasts and things back then. It was basically rock and roll is all I was listening yeah, to yeah. on a boom box. Uh, if anybody remembers or knows what those are, if they're, if they're old enough, they do. Yeah, but I think that's a pretty important thing in life. And to know that even at your young age is so valuable and that's something you can hand down to your children. Well, let's talk about this career you've chosen because detailing cars for me was extremely rewarding because you would take something that didn't look so good 
you would make it look new again and then hand it back to the customer and they would be so happy when they saw it. And that gave me a lot of great feelings and reward that I did something for somebody. And plus, I earned a living doing it, which made it extra special. So why have you chosen this career path? What's in it for you? I mean, I've fallen in love since the first day. Like when I got here in Germany in 2009, I was uh, working for a a company that rents out tents for uh, parties and stuff like that. So, But uh, after a couple of months, it, it wasn't as it used to be. So the owner was not so nice with us and I decided that was it. I'm going to look for something else. And then I heard through other colleagues that a uh, Mercedes dealership was looking for guys to clean polish cars. And then I I sent my father over there and then he went. It was actually a separate company that worked for the Mercedes dealership and they were hiring. So ah. my father went there. He talked to the guy. The guy was also from Romania, oh, funny perfect. enough, from the same <laughs> from the same town, Timisoara. Oh and he said, yeah, come right away. So the next day I've said I'm sick at the 10th job. And then I started over there. It was a week of testing. So I was in uh, probation or I don't, I don't know how to yeah, say Kind that. of a training. Yeah. Training period. Yeah. A training period, test period. Yeah. And then I got, so like I said, I, I fell in love with it right away, even though at first I was only doing tire shine or cleaning windows. So I would walk from a detailing bay to another and ask the guys, what can I do? This guy would tell me, do the door jams or do the windows. And then, like I said, from the first day, I really, I thought I could really do this. I really like this. I, I'm a bit of a freak with cleanness and order and stuff like that. So uh -huh. I think it kind of, yeah. It's, yeah. It gets stuck with you. Well, let me ask yeah. you this, because I always admire people that are immigrants in a way that move from one country to another to start a new life. To me, that is extremely brave, bold, daring. I can't imagine what that's like. In addition to not only going to a new country, leaving your homeland, there's language to deal with. There's cultural aspects to deal with. When you went from Romania to Germany and then Switzerland, did you encounter any of that? And if so, how did you overcome those challenges? Uh, I think not really. I mean, at first I really didn't know how to speak the language and that might have, some people were maybe looking at me funny because I, I still to this day have an accent, but I just wanted to learn. I keep listening to radio all day. When I got home, my father used to have satellite TV and he was watching Romanian channels. And I said, come on, let's, let's show, let's watch some German channels. I really want to know. Then I had my little dictionary, but like I said, I don't know. I can't say people were rude or stuff like that or they understand me. If they didn't understand my German, then I would try in English. And at the end of the day, they still understand me. And then I really, I was focused on what I had to do and when what I had, I knew what I wanted. And yeah. Yeah. So. And there you go. Now you made another big move, not only from Romania to Germany, and then you detailed cars, you, you honed your craft, you learned a lot there, I would assume. And then you decided to go to Switzerland. Now, I think I was trying to think before we connected today, when was the last time I was in Switzerland? I've been there four or five times, I believe. I think the last time I was there was around 2005 or six. It's been a long time. It's such uh -huh. a beautiful country. I was in Zurich uh, back when they used to have the uh, big auto show in Switzerland. I've been to that a few yeah. times going way back That's when. That's in, in Geneva, Geneva, you mean? Or? Yeah, Geneva, yes, yeah. Yes. I but I did get there. to go to Zurich and stayed at a beautiful resort on a lake there for a while with my wife that was just absolutely stunning. So why did you pick Switzerland as a place to land? Yeah, we're actually my wife at the time girlfriend uh, uh, landed a job here in the hotel at the hotel mm -hmm. and then i keep coming back and forth i was still living for a period i also lived in switzerland and was going back to germany to work and then my wife also found something and she uh, she opened up her own business here so at first it was a bit a little bit complicated because in switzerland coming from romania there are different rules so there's not the same rules if if you are german you would get a working permit and a, so like the green card i think yes. would be in america Equivalent, would yep. get yeah way quicker so it was a little bit of a hustle but she managed to get a working permit and a a staying permit and from there it was a little bit easier so she, then she could open up her business and it was different and then yeah she opened up a beauty salon 
And then I was still working in Germany. And I was, at the time, I really had a lot of private customers that I was doing, that I was doing beside the work that I had to do from eight to five. Mm -hmm. So I would be there at six o'clock, maybe 6.30, detail a little bit on a card. And uh, and at 12 o'clock when there was another break, I could do another half an hour. And then I stayed really, really late. And then my wife said to me, uh, she was still my girlfriend at the time. She said, if you want to do this, I suggest you quit your job and you do this like normally, not wake yeah. up at five o'clock in the morning and <laughs> right. come at 10, 11 in the evening. And yeah. Yeah. and I was like a zombie, like really. But I could <laughs> I could do it. I could have do it. I had no problem. You could see on my face I was a little bit tired. But yeah, so then I started thinking, okay, yeah, that might be something. Yeah, because I was uh, able to make all these customers, clients, and they keep coming. So one friend told another, you know how it works. Oh, so yeah. they, yeah. Yeah, if you, I think... It doesn't matter the business. If you do a good job, it's mouth propaganda is better than <laughs> maybe paid com- paid advertising. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. You know, I love this story because Alex, because it's the what they call the side hustle over here. I'm sure it's everywhere in the U.S. The fact that you're doing something you love on the side to try to build it up to get to that point where you're brave enough or bold enough, or somebody like your girlfriend, your wife pushes you out of the nest and says, go do this, take the, t- take the chance. And that's what you did. So talk a little bit about your detailing business today. What's the name of it? And what kind of cars do you work on? What do you like to work on? What do you do there? So the name of the business is A1 Detailing. It's actually, if you look at the logo, it's an A and an I. So that would be the initials from my name. But ah. I prefer, <laughs> instead of saying AI detailing. I the um, a friend of mine who did the logo and everything. He said, "Look, let's do it like a one, and then it's easier to tell people." Because I was going for the initial yeah. initials and then detailing. So I started here in 2017. I've been fortunate enough to work on some pretty nice cars. What it really helped me a lot in the beginning was advertising on Facebook. So at the trainings that I took in Germany, they kind of told us how to market ourselves and and take always take photos a before and after photo it yes. takes one minute you can do a before you can do the area make an after photo and all always document everything yep and then because of the internet and everything you could advertise it on so i was extremely lucky to have a facebook advert advertising yeah because that is pretty much what got me to work now closely with the lamborghini dealership here in zurich and a couple, there's another uh, car collector's museum here in the nearby that I used to go from place to place and then present myself and show, ah, oh, here, look, there's a, there's a scratch or look. I would go and then I would ask for an email. And when I would get home, I would send them a load of photos ah. before and after photos, YouTube links with videos before and after. So that's why, how I managed to... To build a business. Yeah, to build a business. But mostly Facebook ads helped me a ton. So. Yeah. You know, that's a great tip for those listeners out there that maybe want to start their own detailing business. Uh, you can do this. And today, unlike when I was a kid, when I had to get on my bicycle and ride around town and put business cards on people's windshields, yeah. uh, you know, today you can do this Facebook thing and pe- find people, build an audience. It's very similar to any other business. Build a clientele, build an audience, show them what you can do. And of course, you've got to do a good job. You've got to be conscientious, take care of people's vehicles, learn about yeah. how to treat people. I mean, there's all the business business side of it but it's way more easier maybe now it's a yeah i think so yeah yeah i think so i was also doing this so when i didn't have nothing to work on i would grab my flyers and i would grab my visit cards and i had this little map where i had listed all my services and a quick introduction Mm -hmm. certificate uh, certification that i had and i would walk door to door to door and present myself and ask for an email and then bombard them with photos the funny thing at Lamborghini, so there's a Lamborghini dealership, there's Mercedes on the same premises. And then I went inside to Mercedes. I left something there. I said, hello, this is my name. May I get a visit card from the sales department or something? They gave me, and then I got in my car and I didn't saw the Lamborghini dealership. So I drove drove by it and I was I thought to myself, well, you know, they pretty I'm pretty sure they have somebody, but I'll come back another day and 
I, I should have actually stopped and yep. presented myself, yeah. but I drove away. So then what happened one day, a guy called me, he wanted to do his car. And I was running around with flyers at the time, with flyers, visit, visit cars. And uh-huh. then I said, okay, I can be at the garage in half an hour. So we met over there. He had a BMW, an M3 BMW. I told him he wanted the biggest package and he wanted it quick. And I told him, I don't have the time now. I had something coming up. And if you want, at the end of the month, I can gladly do it. But I cannot do it in the time frame that he wanted the car done so he can live uh, so to go on vacation. And uh-huh. I said, it's not possible. What you want in this time frame, no way. I prefer saying no and if you want right. to come back. Yeah, and, when you have yeah, time. And doing it. And he said, okay, no problem. I'll call you. Then a couple of weeks, I oh, completely forgot about it. He didn't call. I, I didn't hear from him. Then there was another guy that called me. He came with a mat car. And he also asked me, what can we do with it? Well, I told you, with a mat car, there's not pretty much you can do. You got to <laughs> yeah. protect that. Either put yeah. PPF on it. And he said, okay, okay, okay. I bombarded him with information. That's what I learned in all the trainings. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll call you and we'll fix something up. So Another couple of weeks passed by nothing. And then I, and one day I got a call and they said, uh, hi, this is Lamborghini Zurich. We have a car here. We would like an offer for it. Mm. I thought it was a friend of mine making jokes. <laughs> so, and I hung up. I Googled the number. It was the number oh. from Lamborghini <laughs> Zurich. So I was there in, fifth, in 10 minutes. And funny enough, the two guys that came and asked for information and prices one of was head of sales and the other one was head of service nice nice you know you dropped some uh, value bombs there alex for people listening that want to start any kind of business really but never assume that somebody isn't interested in what you have to offer no matter where you are at in your career yeah. never assume take that bold move go in there offer your services just act as if they need your services. Tell them what you need. Like you were saying, bombard them with information, good things that they want to hear, and you never know what can happen. So never, ever drive away. It, great story there, Alex. Now, you're a regular <laughs> listener. You know the next question here. That's a challenge question, and that is something that's been real challenging for you, maybe even a big failure that you faced, but more importantly, what did it teach you? So take us on your journey, Alex. Well, a bit of a challenge, I could say, was like learning the business side of detailing because mm, I could yeah. do detailing. I've been when I quit my job, I was I was eight. I already had eight years of detailing and a lot of training with different brands. And but the a little bit of a a, a challenge was the learning the business side because, like I said, I could detail, but I didn't know really. And funny, when I was young, I was went in. I was in college, and I did one semester of business school and economics, mm-hmm. and then I dropped out of it. And I was doing actually pretty good, from what I remember. That one semester, I really got good grades in it. But then I don't know what was in my head. I quit that. That could have helped me helped me a ton. Yeah. But then what I've done, I've like I've searched for books, any information that I could use or hear when I was detailing, but because that's all I do. I listen to educate yourself. Yeah. yeah I, I educated myself and yeah, I think I've pretty much got a hand. I mean, I still have a lot to learn because yeah. I'm only a couple of years in, but I'm, I'm a sponge for that. For information. <laughs> well, you're a, you're a gold uh, nugget dropper here today, Alex, because you just dropped another great one. There are so many ways today versus again, when I was a kid, you had to go to a library, go through those library cards and try to find what books existed. Now, the plethora of knowledge that is at our fingertips on these devices we carry to learn how to be good at something is beyond imagination. I could only dream. I couldn't even dream of it back then. If I had, I could have figured it out and I'd be a billionaire today to figure all this tech stuff out. But, <laughs> but you're exactly right. Is I encourage people all the time, use any spare time you have or even time you're working if you can listen to things to listen. Listen to podcasts, listen to books, listen to other people's advice, uh, follow other people, blogs from other people. There's so many people out that want to offer you help. I just went through a few weeks ago a three, four day training, live video training with Tony Robbins, motivational speaker. Oh, okay, I know. I listened to probably, yeah. I think. Tony's all incredible. Of his, yeah. yeah, yeah. He yeah. was actually a client of mine when I was in advertising decades ago. Wow. Interesting okay. guy. To, yeah, interesting guy to work with. I got to know him. Uh, I mean, there's so much at our fingertips. So instead of wasting your time with 
television or whatever you waste your time with, you can absorb all this stuff and you can self-educate and learn and you can become a success like Alex here. Uh, really, oh, really, really great tips for you. Let's take a short break. Thank You're welcome. Let's thank our sponsors and we come back. We're going to dive into this passion that I think you have for cars here, Alex. So sit tight and we'll be right back. How did you discover your path to a fulfilling life? Too many young people flounder in finding an education and a career that fits. But for those who have a passion for cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and who love working with their hands, problem solving, and fixing things, a career as a professional auto technician is incredibly rewarding. Cars yeah is pleased to team up with Tech Force Foundation, our charity of choice in bringing scholarships technical education, and hands-on experience to young people so they can discover a possible future. Join me and lend your support by visiting techforce.org today. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. Join Linkage. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. And when you're at the website, make sure you use the code CARSYEAH and get $10 off your subscription at LinkageMag.com. All right, we're back on this automotive journey of yours. And you had one other little thing you wanted to share, right? Yes, kids stay in school so <laughs> yes <laughs> yes that was a lesson for me dropping out and then it, it it was something i had to know if i wanted to to succeed in this in this business so i i think that would have helped me a lot to, to stay in business school yeah great tip right there i, I appreciate that why don't you share a story with us if you would uh your pivotal moment in your life and you knew that you were a bit of a car guy well, I really remember like it was yesterday. I had my mom always bought me Legos. And <laughs> yeah. the funny and I especially I like the Lego cars because the thought was so amazing that you can remodel and do the car however you want and break it down and do another model. And I remember that my mom didn't always had money to buy me other Legos. So I just kept working with what I had. I used to go, we was, used to pass the, the store that had Legos in the in the windows. And then I would look at them. And then I said, okay, I could probably do that one. I can do that one. So I really, I, I don't know, with cars, with Legos, I think that's where it started. And I, I really like transforming them and making them bigger, making them smaller, lower. So yeah, Lego was a big... Uh, even today, I, I play with the Lego for my <laughs> with my daughter and my yeah. son. So They're incredible. I played with them when I was a kid. I mean, amazing yeah. company with that. And the things they're doing now are just oh, would, blow, yeah. would have blown me away when I was a kid. Is there a special vehicle or bike or truck or car in your life? And if there is, maybe share a memory about that ride. Well, that would probably have to be the, the first car that I ever bought with my own money. Mm -hmm. And that was a red 196 uh, Opel Corsa. Oh, okay. Now, if you hear the word Corsa, you would think it's probably some kind of a racing car or something. No. Opel Corsa is kind of like a mini estate wagon. So if you look it up, you're going to laugh. <laughs> it was I was working at the dealership and I was looking for a car to, to drive around more. Like people over here have a second car. They call it like a winter car. So they... Yeah. They drove the nice cars in the summer and then the, the the winter cars in the winter. And I bought it. The funny thing is I bought it. Somebody traded it in for an Audi. Okay. That, that was later when I was working at Audi. So somebody traded in and I told the seller, if there's something small and cheap, it's for me. Please let me know at least. Yeah. And he told me about the car 
he wanted 30 euros, uh, 300 euros, and I ended up buying it for 200. Now, I bought it, and that was in the middle of the week. At the end of the week, I had to go to Romania to marry. And then from there, we went on our honeymoon to Las Vegas. So I left <laughs> the Las car. Las Vegas, wow. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was an amazing experience. Las Vegas, and Los Angeles, and we were, went to a couple of places. But I, I bought the car, and I knew, he told me the batteries keep dying, so you might have to replace that. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it when, I, when we come back. I left it on the parallel dead alley that was like parallel to the uh, Audi dealership. Uh -huh. So I went back, came about three weeks later, and then I noticed there was something coming from the behind. I noticed there was something on the, on the passenger seat. And I said, okay, I don't know. Maybe I forgot something. Then I look closer. The window was broken. Somebody tried to steal it. Oh, no. And high wire it. The cables were all torn down under the, yeah. the steering wheel. Oh. They tr but because of the battery, they couldn't. They couldn't get it started. <laughs> yeah. So then I had, funny thing, I had an insurance that covered that. Oh, so nice. the insurance came, Kai. The insurance guy came. He took a look at it. He said, okay, it's so much, it's so much. And I ended getting back. 900 euros oh my gosh oh jeez yeah, so bonus he, he evaluated the window and then the steering ring and the cables the the glass was like probably 60 euros and i uh, a really close friend of mine that works there a good mechanic he fixed up all the wires i give him 100 euro and that was it so it was yeah. i've the paid car the paid you the car paid you back <laughs> yeah that was and i then i end up selling it 5 years later with 500 Wow. So I, that was a that good was, deal. I, I, yeah, that was actually one of the first before and after photos that I did on that car. It was it was a, a red, but it was it was all oxidized. Those things are little uh, hatchbacks, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's like a like, like a, a little mini. golf, like a little golf for a Mini Cooper yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it, it was a four door. Yeah, they all so was a coupe, but this one was a four door. So I really liked. I detailed it until there was no more paint on it. <laughs> there you go. Here's a bit of an introspective question for you, Alex. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, what would you be? Yeah, I, I thought about a little <laughs> bit. Of I know this is an odd one. I've been fortunate enough to work for some beautiful cars like the LaFerrari and other Lamborghinis wow. and rare cars. But there was one thing that there was one car and it's called, uh, I'm pretty sure you know about it, a Marauder. Mm, okay. It's a, a South African military vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on, Rich Hammond uh, showed it on Top Gear and it, this car went through walls. They put explosive on underneath it. And I think it's, I find my, I, I don't know, it's a little bit, it's big, I'm big. I mean, I'm not big, I'm tall, but I see myself as this car. So they, they went through walls, they put explosive, and it kept going. It kept, and that's what I, that's... That's what you are. Like. That's your personality. You know, the Marauder, that thing is insane. I mean, it looks yeah. like a, it looks like a, something out of Hollywood, like a monster transformer truck or something. I mean, ha Hummer on steroids. Oh, yeah. Hummer on big time steroids. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah it's, it's like a Hummer on Arnold Schwarzenegger steroids or something. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. that he takes those, but you know what I mean? I mean, just it just it's a killer looking vehicle. And I I think and you can actually buy it I, from what I've understand well, I mean, as a civilian. Oh, really? You could drive it on the roads? Yeah. Yeah. You they do a background check. So that's what. Richard Hammond on Top Gear presented it, and wow. you said you can buy it uh, around three hundred thousand pounds. Okay, so it's pretty goes seventy miles an hour, from what I remember. Oh, geez. and like I said, it he went through with with it through walls over other cars, and that's how I see the obstacles, like walls or other cars, and it just I just go over them, past them, through them. It, well, cool. Well, you thought that went through really nicely. Thank you for doing that. Sometimes that trips a few <laughs> people up, as you know, as a listener. But uh, you're the first Marauder on the show, Alex. So very, very cool. I kept thinking of other nice cars, but then I remembered this one because I I really watched Top Gear a lot. Top yeah. Gear a lot tonight. Great show. They were also in Romania. You should watch that that one show when they were in. I'm gonna send you the link. Okay. When Top Gear was in, in Romania, it's a nice little 
Romanian lesson. It's yeah. maybe a 30 they... minutes. You'll enjoy watching it because it's really funny what they do in Romania. So Okay. Well, you send me that. <laughs> I'll put that on Alex's show notes page for all you listeners to watch. You can get a little taste yes. of uh, Romania and a marauder. I think that's very, very cool. All right. We are entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off some questions, get some quick answers from you. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits, Alex, that you believe has helped contribute to your successes in life? Well, I would have to say, especially in the the business of detailing, then this is something I heard Jimbo say saying on ah, his podcast. A detailer, yes. Yes. Under promise and over deliver. Yeah. Works every because time. Because I think, yeah, especially, I mean, you can, there are stuff you can, there are limits to paint correction and cleaning and stuff. So that's why I always try to educate my clients and maybe, like I said, under promise and over deliver and then i blow them blow their expectations away i think by doing that years ago when i was a kid detailing cars a lady called me and she said i stopped and got gas on the way home from you detailing my car you even cleaned the inside of my gas cap <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and i said yep that's what i do so yeah that's under what promise, we do, yeah. over deliver now if i could range for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry living or deceased who would it be well, there's somebody I think is also close to your heart because I heard you mention about him. Uh-huh. And I I actually saw the tragedy happen on TV. It's Ayrton Senna. Oh, yeah. So at the time, my father was a, is, is still a really big fan of Formula One. I, we also, he took me to Budapest to the Hungaroring Grand Prix nice. two times. So what I would have imagined is, I don't know, hearing some stories from him and and also, there was at some point I saw on TV there was a Mercedes. I think they had this double F1 cockpit. So you, there was Hamilton driving, I think, and you can sit in the back. Yes. So I would imagine Senna in driving me. <laughs> so because wow. I, he was really like I don't know. I remember an interview. Somebody said that he would let you decide if you want to crash or not. Because he was. He was driving in his own lane. So if you wanted to, cr- you either went to the side out of his way or you would, he would crash with you. He didn't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he was really, yeah. Incredible guy. Yeah, absolutely. He's Incredible one, guy, one of my, yeah. uh, one of my uh, stars that I like to follow for sure. Now, when it comes to automotive advice, what's the best advice someone else ever offered you, Alex? Well, the, uh, one advice I got when I, when I moved here to Switzerland, I think uh, it would be best to put it while in Swi- while driving in Switzerland, pay really close attention to the speeding signs. Yes, yeah, because they don't like you to speed get, there. <laughs> ooh, you can land it depending on how. So I really, because there was a guy that landed in jail. I think it was all over. Probably the most expensive ticket ever given for for speeding. I think it was over here probably like a half a million or something was it he was speeding like crazy <laughs> that some of the cameras didn't even catch him he, went by, he went by so fast I'll yeah tell you, yeah i was in switzerland in 1996 i was with somebody and we picked up a new porsche at the factory in germany and we drove from germany down into italy we went to switzerland and france and when we got to oh, switzerland nice. i'll never forget it we had to pull into this little station and report that we were there give them our passports and they checked who we were and the guy walked out and he he looked at the car and he looked at us and i'll never forget he had a machine gun over his shoulder and i'll never forget he looked at us and he said don't speed in switzerland (laughs) you see yes so that's why i remember the first time i visited my friend i got my father's uh mercedes amg he had like a c 180 Mm-hmm. And that cost me an extra 300 francs. Uh, so just, yeah. just I took two lights, two, because there's this stationary surprises, I like to call them. Yes. Boom, photo. Boom, photo. Yeah. So that. Yeah, they'll get that you. Was, yeah, uh, no, don't speak in Switzerland. You. No, yes. you know, there's so much beauty there. Slow down and enjoy the beauty while you're in Switzerland. Yeah, you can save the, the high speeds. are amazing. You can save the high speeds for the Autobahn in Germany. Now, when it comes yeah. to great resources, is there one you'd like to share? Well, I think, I don't know, the internet, maybe audio books. I mean, if you, if you can listen to something while you're doing something, to listen to some, there are a lot of, so 
audio books, podcasts. Like I, I really enjoy listening to your podcast and any other uh, detailing related podcast like Jimbo's detailing podcast, Larry. I also had the chance to oh, meet Larry. Oh, Larry at Ammo? Yeah, I had the chance to meet him in New York one time. And it yeah, was, he's a great yeah, guy. He's too. really inspiring, yeah. So. Yep. Well, I'll tell you something, and I've, I've said this before, but for those of you who missed it, audiobooks. My wife is a voracious reader, and she learned a long time ago that if you sign up at your local library, they will send you audiobooks straight to your device for free. She gets all her books. She gets them like she gets like two or three books a week. If they don't have a book that you want, you could submit a request and they'll get it for you. And it's all through your at least here in the United States. It's all free through your library card. And it's, I will. Yeah. Credible research. Look into it because some of them, Expensive. not all of them are free. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a really great resource. And a lot of people are shocked to learn that. Uh, check it out, your local library, especially here in the United States. You can get audiobooks for free. It's a killer deal. I know your taxes pay for it, but you know what? It's so underutilized, you might as well get it, so there's no excuse. Now, speaking of books, is there a great book that you've read, Alex, you'd like to share? Yeah, I don't. I wish I would have more time to read, but I, I really enjoy listening okay. listening yeah, to them. Yeah, audio's so. fine. But so I wanted, I had a, a list of books, but then I keep <laughs> listening to your podcast and then every, they, they keep mentioning it. I know, so yeah. I, one book that really blown my mind and opened my eyes was uh, Michael E. Gerber's The E-Myth Revisited. Oh, gosh, But yeah. I don't want to, to mention that because I know you mentioned that when you were <laughs> interviewed yeah. by your son. Yep. And the... Uh, the one that I uh, want to mention is the one from that really has a lot of gems in it. It's the one from um, Earl Nightingale. It's called The Essence of Success. Yes. And it has really like life, business, uh, a lot of gems in yeah, there. Yeah, so. great book. I'm, I'm glad you recommended that. Uh, again, listeners, this is a great place on the Cars Hill website called Guest Recommended Books. It's under the resource tab on my website. There are over 1,800 books listed there, and I made it really easy for you to click and get them. Uh, Sends you right basically to Amazon, where you can either get the hardbound, uh, softbound, or you can, you know paperback, or you get the audiobook uh, right there. I made it really easy for you. So Earl Nightingale's The Essence of Success, a great book, and of course. Michael Gerber's The E-Myth Revisited, one of my favorites. Yeah. All right, Alex, yes. we're up to the checkered flag here. You know this question. This is the fun one. I'm going to buy you a car today, buddy. Anything you oh, want. Oh, you shouldn't have. Park it in. I know. <laughs> I'm going to park it in the garage. We're going to drive it very slowly through Switzerland. But once we get out of that country, we're going to haul butt. What am I going to buy you today, Alex? A car that's, that I've really like and i remember the first time i see it i was blown away the mercedes-benz 300 sl mm. so the maybe the 1957 in red in red gold. yeah okay yeah. okay yeah well with the butterfly doors yeah yeah that's something I, yeah I, the gold wing doors as they call them here but yeah. yeah it's one of those incredible cars and i'll tell you from so many people i've talked to who have cars like that i got to drive one years ago uh, there's a gentleman up here who has not only the Gullwing, but also the Roadster version, which is pretty cool. They have both. Um, yeah. His are in red. So uh, I'll send you a picture of me sitting in one of those. But that's a rare, okay. really nice selection. Yeah, what I, a wonderful car to drive through the Swiss Alps. Oh, my gosh. That'd be killer. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Uh, you like lot. that. Okay. I'll get to work on that for you, my friend. Alex, you've taken me on a fun ride. I'm so glad we've been able to connect here. You know, I've got listeners in over 80 countries all over the world. And when people like you reach out, I'm so happy to bring you on board, have you talk about your successes, the amazing journey in your life that you're doing what you love. That's what Cars Yow is all about. Before you drive off into the Swiss Alps in that 300 SL, would you share <laughs> one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance with our listeners today oh yes what i would have to say under promise and over deliver <laughs> yeah and there's one more thing that i that i wanted to mention and uh, that would like it's uh, demand excellence in what you buy and produce excellent excellence in what you do that's also something that's been stuck with me since the day I've heard it. Yeah, you know, great, great wisdom bombs that you dropped for us today. Absolutely spectacular, Alex. I have no doubt your success is going to continue. And again, do you have a website that Thank people you, can find you at? You're welcome. Yes. The, my website is a one 
detailing.ch, but if somebody wants to see some nice cars or shiny cars and maybe forget the before, leave aside the before and after uh, videos, on my YouTube channel, I have a lot of nice cars that I've, shiny nice cars that I've worked in in the past. Okay. And what is the title of your YouTube page? So the YouTube is uh, A1 Detailing Swiss. That would be the YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, and over there I have a lot of videos, like I said. And if somebody wants to see photos, I have my Facebook page where I where they're the same videos but more n- nicer photos with the cars. That's A1 Detailing slash Autoflege. That's the German word for detailing. So it's okay. A1 Detailing slash Autoflege. I don't know. If somebody wants to see some okay. nice, pretty shiny cars i've got a lot of well i have a feeling all our listeners love to look at nice shiny detail cars so i'll make sure i put links to those on his show notes page so you can find everything there uh this has been tremendous alex thank you for a wonderful day here in zurich i really appreciate you spending some time with me until you and i talk again my friend i'll see you down the road thank you mark thank you it was an honor to be on your show especially with the previous guest that you had Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you're, you. You're welcome, my friend. The pleasure is all mine. Hey, fellow inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Did you know if you subscribe at carsdad.com, I'll send you my free filler up book? It's an ebook filled with fuel, filler fun, and inspirational quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get a weekly wrap up email from me every Friday, and your name will be in the hat for one of the many free giveaways here at Cars Yeah. Simply go to carsyeah.com and click on the free book button, and boom, you're in the club. And don't forget to subscribe to Cars Yeah on your mobile podcast app, and you'll get the Cars Yeah show delivered right to your mobile device every day, absolutely free. Inspiring automotive enthusiasts, that's what we're all about. Here at Cars Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.